How are you going everyone? Today we'll be looking at quite a renowned animator, Kazuya Hisada, hailing from Studio Segasha. He made quite a name for himself back on Dragon Ball Z as well as in One Piece, having worked as a character designer for many years as well as a chief animation supervisor. But flicking back to Dragon Ball Z, Studio Segasha was one of the top studios when it came to handling action, thanks to animators like Hisada as well as Naoki Tate and Masahiro Shimanuki. But the particular scene we'll be looking at is within episode 87. This is the first confrontation between Goku and Frieza, and Hisada is certainly the right man to handle it. The storyboard and direction comes from Akihiko Yamaguchi. This is the only episode in the entire series where he fills this role. He worked as an assistant director in a couple of episodes in the original Dragon Ball series and a few in Dragon Ball Z, but his main role was as an assistant production manager through the two main series. Of course though, before we get to the main topic at hand, the featured artist for this video is Ray Oak. He has some great work and is quite creative, so why not show him some support? I'm sure he would very much appreciate it. Link to his account will be in the description. So beginning off, Piccolo instructs Krillin and Gohan to get out of the area. They all then launch out of there and into the air. I love how much style there is to specific actions and movements. There is a nice impact frame here and bold action lines with some hang time to the rocks and camera shake thereafter. It's additionally a nice touch that he didn't just animate simple lip flaps, but animates his jaw and his whole body as he talks. As Krillin flies back, he has this really exaggerated movement Flicking through a lot of great poses, reminds me a bit of Tate. This is probably a trait he picked up from Hisada. Thereafter, Goku launches through the air, landing a blow on Frieza before they disappear in a cloud of dust. The build-up leading into this is really well done. The anticipation is great. There feels like there is a lot of energy behind the launch off. This is executed thanks to timing with the right foot, then the spacing between this frame, than this one. It's very snappy as well as making the movement feel more sudden. The extra addition of having the ground break further adds to that. The camera zooms out with some nice background animation with Hesada holding the key pose. The pose itself is nice, but the ones thereafter are excellent. Love the exaggerated gestures and foreshortening. It's a big reason as to why I love Hiroyuki Omaishi's work, adds an extra layer of depth and drama, and much like Hiroyuki Omaishi, this is definitely the influence of the legendary Yoshinori Kanada seeping through. You could see that before with Krillin, and you'll also be able to observe that in his later scene which I'll touch on towards the end of the video. Moving on, there is a big fist moving right into the camera with bold line work applied, very much like Shimanuki. As the camera zooms out into a long shot, you have some great composition with Yamaguchi's storyboard. Having everything on a diagonal adds to the motion and is interesting. Furthermore, the brief pause also adds emphasis and a bit of drama. After the smooth transition with the dust clouds, the two characters attack and dodge, then bouncing back and forth through the landscape, exchanging blows. This section presents a good example of what I was talking about in the Tate video in regards to limited animation, that I strongly believe it speaks to the skill of an animator and director in being able to communicate a high stakes battle with minimal animation, as here you have pretty much just stills. Then in the next part, Goku and Frieza are represented as just a group of speed lines, again really minimal stuff. But let's look at its execution. So the way they vanish with a flickering of lines and how you still have these shockwaves even after they've disappeared give a sense of extreme speed. The slow dissolve to black as you flick between these various frames provides a feeling like everything's so fast you're just getting this brief glimpse of them fighting. With the following cut having the camera pan erratically around the background with them nowhere to be seen. Then after some good shocked expressions, you only see speed lines and just explosions and water splashing up all around the background. Like they're moving so fast, you're just getting a blur with the contrast and timing of the various clouds and explosions adding to that sense of speed. For example, while this hill is crumbling away, they clash about seven times. Really great work. But then Goku reappears again, some nice character art. Frieza flicks through the air with Goku managing to dodge all his attacks, with his scene ending there and Shimanuki following up thereafter. Once again with Freezer, it's pretty limited but quite good, very Kanada-esque, with wide spacing and extreme poses, and despite limited movement, it doesn't compromise on motion. I particularly like just how forceful and generally cool these poses look. Hisada has another scene around at the 18 minute mark, so 
Let's take a look at that. So at this point, Goku's just dodged a blast by Freezer, which sends a massive wave of lava up. Freezer with his key then blasts it at Goku. So starting off, you've got the classic dramatic Sagasha head turn, the camera zooming in and moving past Goku to then tracking the smoke and lava. It illustrates some nice camera work and effects by also tracking the clouds and switching to only a close up of Goku. It plays a bit more into that surprise or wow factor in the next shot which again is beautifully framed. Yamaguchi's storyboard furthermore communicates an excellent sense of scale. In the next cut, there is some more great art of Frieza. I further like the strong anticipation and expressions behind his action. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of style behind characters' actions. And once again, spectacular framing. There's a fair bit of depth with the layering of various elements. The arching effects and shape design to the lava is really clear and nice. The movement though to the lava does feel a little rough though, but isn't the biggest issue. Goku then powers up though and blasts the lava away. Frieza soon after appears behind and inflicts a blow with his tail, sending him flying into a rock and then he falls back into the canyon. The intensity behind the power up is great. There's a stack of impact frames and camera shake, Simple but effective. Freezer's blow on Goku also holds a lot of impact. You've got that classic trait you can also see with Tate's work more so back in Z, where for big hits they draw a stack of speed lines, although here it is a little less. They then hold the keyframe and zoom in and out. The pose itself also sells this. It's great how he really pushes Goku's head back. And as he tumbles through the air, you can again see there's a major reliance on keyframes with no in-betweens and spacing with dramatic poses throughout. And then after falling back, you get this beautiful arc. Thereafter, there's some dialogue. The storyboard presents it in an interesting way, so that's nice. And there's some great character art of Piccolo. I've said many times before that I love seeing hatching and that's very much present here. Moving on, we probably get one of the most dynamic shots that we've seen so far as Goku is holding on. The foreshortening here is exceptional, but the comical character animation is definitely the highlight. Once again, you can see Kanada's influence here through the erratic rhythm and strong poses. The timing here begins on fives, twos, threes, then follows after in 253, 232, 323, then again in the same sequence. Flicking between holding the key for five frames, then two, creates a noticeable contrast, additionally giving that sort of jerky feel to the movement, which is very much intentional and appropriate here. I also have to add that these poses are really fun and full of energy. Soon after, there's some reused animation and staring, then the classic scene of Goku leaping out on fire, and I have to say the contrast between the dramatic framing of Freezer with all the foreground covered in shadow, with these white eyes shining through and this massive stream of lava behind him, really serious and then just like switching to Goku getting third degree burns, you know, great stuff. However, to the conclusion, Hisada really brought the vision laid out in the storyboard to its fullest potential. His work is energetic and interesting through his unique posing to timing and spacing. Furthermore, Yamaguchi's storyboard, as I've said many times already, was excellent. A lot of depth and a great sense of scale communicated consistently. It flowed really well and it would have been great if he had directed more episodes. But on that note, breakdown over. So thank you everyone for watching the video. I haven't done an analysis on Hisada's work since literally the beginning of the year. So I had a lot of fun making this one. And while making it, I also got the opportunity to look at some of Amaishi's and Kanada's work again, which just made everything better again. But with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.